Thank you very much, Slacks. Yes, very much looking forward to this one. Evil Genius is versus Beast Coast here in the lower bracket. We heard it there, Fog. You know, Boba very happy that they were able to get the Brood Mother and be able to build a draft around that. Uh, would you also agree there's reason to be confident in getting that through in the way they've closed it up at Free G? Or do you feel the Beast Coast will have the means to deal with the Spider? It does look like they have a lot of answers of to, because they've seen it so many times. We've seen them play it, I think, five times. They did drop one game, I believe, versus Liquid when they had the Brood, but they do have so many answers. It seems like every single one of their heroes is to respond to that and also to respond versus the Wraith Pack build that we've seen pretty much every game. They have the Snapfire, of course you have that little Shredder to kill it off, so it does look like they answered it pretty nicely, but let's see what's going to happen with that last pick, ter last pick Terror Blade. Right, well, let's get ourselves into the action. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game one of Evil Geniuses versus Beast Coast. And in terms of the way that they ended the draft, your Fog closing up with the Terra play. What, what does that sort of say about EG's strategy overall in terms of the timings and, and strength they're going to look to play towards against Beast Coast? Just, seem, just doesn't it seem like he's going to be able to like, get enough distractions on the game because he has this Brood, he has this Hoodwink, he has this Ember that's going to be causing problems across on the other side of the map. So maybe it feels like he can get all the space in the world as this Terra Blade to be able to get this scaling. But looking at the draft, of course, from Beast Coast, they have a lot of answers, of course, too, for TV. Mars no, has traditionally been seen as one of those heroes, even though it's gotten nerfed a lot of times, has done well versus TB, and they have a plethora of burst damage and nuke that we saw work pretty well versus these pretty squishy agi cores a lot of time. Uh, on the side of Beast Coast, obviously, uh, finishing with that slot pick here for Hector. If you get anything here as both teams. Look how much information they're giving. Just because that Slark standing on the high ground, that night vision, you can see so much. They can actually sneak into this enemy jungle nicely. And indeed, it's able to pick up the, the ward there, Gojira. Mm -hmm. See it, the, the sun here around the mid, K1. Not going to want to stand around too much. I don't think I've ever seen that happen, actually. I, not, yeah. At least not in a uh, TI. No, right? no. They get their mid war just walked just up and snatched because of that night vision. Yeah, well. Oh. All right, that's going to be pretty cool to set uh, up. And they'll be happy with that one, Beast Coast. And look at this approach. The start yeah. of the lane right away, they're going to actually put the pressure onto the TB. I think they look at this lane and they're like, this is a lane the TB can definitely get punished. This Mars, this Snapfire, they could definitely shut this down since there's just a Sven behind him. All right, let's see how it plays out. Yeah, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Let's see if it has any sort of implications on the way they're able to set up this early vision and indeed the, the lack of it that EG might have these first few minutes around certain areas. This is that melee versus melee matchup, so sometimes, you know, it can be like a range versus range where you want that high ground ward to be able to play with them to pull creep aggro and stuff like yep. that. So it's not the, I mean, of course it sucks to lose your ward, but couldn't be, could be worse if it was him like on a range or something like that in a disadvantageous matchup. So the weather this lane starts down bottom, I mean, so which core is going to be happier at the beginning out of uh, K1 and Nightfall down here? It's pretty tough to bully out Brood nowadays with the new way that the web works. You don't really get slow ever. You have so much health region. When you get that second point in web, even if you drop low on HP, you're pretty speedy and you'll be able to get that, of course, that HP regen that builds. And so I don't think Nightfall should be too worried. He also has crit always behind him, so... I would say if anyone has to worry, it's Stinger more than anything in this lane. For sure, yeah, has to be careful how far he steps up, especially once the level twos are there. Crit could look for a quick setup and have that damage. It's just a lot of harassment that comes out with the Blightstone and then the spam that's going to be coming out from the Silken Bola. We'll see which choice actually Nightfall does go for because also, we, you know, you can actually go for either. Any of these builds could go for like, just like 1-2-1 one, one or something like that so he can trade with Hector. Or K1, we should say, of course. Of course, on this at this top lane, then, for, for Arteezy trying to lane against the Snap Mars duo that Beast Coast are putting against him. I mean, is he going to be fine up here, or is there potential for kills to be found by Beast Coast? I mean, from what we've seen, these Svens are able to secure lanes pretty nicely, but it looks Ooh, like they're yeah, good like set up here. They will indeed. First blood for Beast Coast. Nice little combo there. Of course, between these two heroes, Snap and Mars, they'll be able to pull off much more of that to come here in the laning stage. And they can do that to Arteezy pretty much any yeah. time too. So he always has to be careful. It's it's a death that's kind of needed in a way. Like it's it, it's gonna happen there for the Sven and it's better that he dies than the TB dies to this big burst damage that comes out from these two. But they're gonna keep going for that. They're gonna always go for these double nuke plays onto either TB or Sven if they're out of position. Of course, whilst the, the meta is unavailable, very hard for EG to get aggressive in return. He's but so far, he's farming very well. Right? He is, 13 he's... and 3, even though he did lose to Sven. Not being slowed down so far. 
None of the corners really. Mid lane also. So you see Smile versus Ab Abed. Pretty much dead even. And bottom. Hector, eh, a little bit behind, but it's a tough lane in a way versus the Yeah, I think I feel that sort of uh, across the map, he's, he's the one that's going to have a bit of a trickier time when it comes to getting up to the CS. Honestly, it feels like both of the carries might start to be in some troublesome positions, right? Like Arteezy does feel like once these nukes start leveling up even more, will be problematic for him, but they do actually get a stacked pull-off. That's pretty rare. So they're going to lose a whole wave on Beastos. structures are fortified. Let's see what Gojira can try and do about this. See if there's a chance to, to maybe look for a kill between the two of them here, Whisper and Gojira. The setup onto fly, but quick with the man going the stun, make sure the Whisper doesn't get the chance to, to line up any follow up. That hurts though. They lost literally the entire wave there to that double pull, and Artiz is able to free farm under the tower, so really good play from fly. His bottom, yeah, just constantly seeing them spamming these spells back onto each other. All the trees being cut on the side there, you see. K1 constantly calling blading. Always gonna be watching for those calling blade plays, of course, also versus the Hoodwink to cut down that acorn shot. On the top. Once the meta's up, it's definitely a bit trickier for Beast Coast to try and make that play between these two. They still do have a lot of burst, right? If they can get the chain stun, even Arteezy could go down. Uh, absolutely, yeah. If they can land sort of the lineup to get that good angle with the spear. Be almost certainly death for one of EG's members on that top lane. And they are hanging on to a lot of stick charges up here too. Five on Gojira and also nine on Whisper. But lingering pretty low on HP. I'm not opposed to taking the occasional bounty. Down bottom, K1 able to rely on Stinger to continue to bring in the, the regen whilst he's working his way towards that six. Second set of tangos here picked up. up. Here they get the angle. Looking to follow up, it's another kill. Beast Coast combo here proving to be very strong and as best as EG are trying to avoid getting caught in these situations flying out easy, Beast Coast still able to find these opportunities. Yeah. It's pretty unavoidable. Like they have the CM aura, so they're always able to spam their spells up here too. And they might even go for Arteezy. Top, they uh, He's on his own now. Underneath the tower. See if they can do this here, but Fly back in action and TP at the ready. He'll manage to turn up and make sure that the dive cannot continue, but really feel it already. Beast Coast finding these. These great chances to just oh, get under that tower a and aggressive. Right, cooking as well, under to Whisper to close the gap, but the stick charges will keep Fly fine. These guys will have to reset a little bit. They're starting to fall low on the two of them. But the rotation's coming in. Look how low these heroes on our G EG are. I mean, yeah, Fly and Arteezy have to be careful. Here we go, Chris, he's, he's looking for Fly. He saw him. Be able to catch him with the avalanche, he can. Fly's not going to be able to run away from this one. He'll pop the war cry, but a final blast from Kajira gets another. I mean, in the rune, uh, he's going to be able to. Oh, with the remnant. Oh, he's in and he's out. Arbed will manage to, to still pick that up before Chris swings back towards the mid. That would have been some pretty fortunate scenarios coming in. Of course, the rune spawning top right when he's rotating. Does get the catapult last hit on Chris Luck. Good start for him. Level six early yep. on. Quick, easy rotation. Doesn't find the terror blade, but again, finding the early kills three and zero ready for Beast Coast. And the bottom lane, they actually haven't died. They've weathered everything. And as you mentioned, your Slark, sure, he's a bit behind the counterpart. 400 behind the TB. 800 actually behind the Brood, but they haven't died down here. No. And it, it, this was going to be the toughest part of the map for, for Beast sure. Coast in, in this landing stage, no doubt about it. So they're, they're dealing very well with the pressure and the setup that EG exactly set up against them. And now with this movement from Gajira, they might find a chance to, to make a kill onto Nightfall. And with the pounce, the blast to follow up into the cookie, and indeed the spider's gone. Beast Coast. They are doing a, an excellent read of, of where they can make these plays in this laning stage here. They're not letting a kill miss them at all here. Four to zero now. It's similar to the way that we saw Thunder, you know, the approach that they took versus EG, just this constant aggression. It's really nice moves coming after them. And now K1, soon to be, get level, be getting level six, so should be able to withstand down bottom on his own. Yeah, really smart moves. And we see a pretty clever ward, of course, too, from Gojiri. Actually places it in the river down bottom after he makes the rotation. So, gonna spot any rotations that Crit makes as well. Maybe guarantees that eight-minute power rune for Chris Luck if they do linger in the area. Definitely want to, to keep control of that power rune for sure. They're actually going for the play here on mid. Get the toss back. But as well to follow things up. It might be, ooh, so close. Almost gets the frostbite on top of it. Same time up top. CEG now make a move on towards Mars. Look to, to threaten Whisper. He'll be able to spear back Arteezy, but Flying Crit able to finish him off as EG finally get themselves a kill on the board. 
Yeah, lane's starting to break pretty early on here. And Rune will spawn, and yep, Gojira, since he's staying in that area, will secure it with the three heroes. Yeah, no that's K1 in a 1, K1 in a 1v1 versus the Brood, much better for him. I, I, he's happy now. Yeah, he's hit yeah. the six. So when it's Nightfall alone down here, K1, very little to, to be concerned about. Yep. Should be able to start closing that gap in the farm. And we do see Nightfall, most of the games he's gone for that Wraith Pack, but I think he's starting to realize, you know, they have the Snap who's gone for the early points in the little shredder too. He can actually go Wraith Pack first item. So gonna go for the pipe. Also the item that, you know, all these broods do go as like the first, second item. Yeah. A lot of magic damage, so. Absolutely, yeah, he needs it to, to be able to protect his army this game. Exactly, and to protect the TB if he does show up early. There's so Radiant much magic versus the Tombisco, so we like that. Seeing Abed kind of cutting mid lane as well, and they are looking to make perhaps some continues too. So trying to divert all that tension off of the top lane. Want to go for Nightfall? Nightfall. Nightfall. He's playing very cautious under the tower. Same time around the mid, they'll look to dive in for Chris. Chris able to get the free man avalanche off. Time's being bought for the backup TPs to come in. The Stinger turns up, and EG they won't be able to continue the aggression onto Chris. He'll be fine. He's very tanky. Now still have, you know, it's pretty much a full stick there. Ten charges and a fairy fire, so really a kill that EG was going to be able to get, even with the three of them turning up. A scary place to overcommit to. I think they knew that the Mars wasn't going to be able to come in, but the two supports could be around there just to back him up right away. And now K1, yeah, you know, level six is online. Treads are done. He's just going to get to the jungle a little bit here. Another move for mid. Not going to be able to get Gojira, though. Although, 4-1, to one, EG still leading in the network. Yeah, bomb still good. Core is still looking very good with their presence. And Nightfall, now the pressure is going to start on the bottom lane. So let's see what Beast Coast does to react versus this spider. As we mentioned earlier, their trap does have a ton of ways to clear them out. They'll try for the catch onto K1. We'll scare him enough to pop the Shadow Dance immediately in return to the Bushwhack coming in from Crit. The lane Arena was dropped it. Looks like they made an attempt, but uh, weren't quite able to pull it off this time. RTZ remains safe. Won't be able to continue to farm underneath the, the Tier 1 top, underneath the Tier 1 bottom. Trying to dive in past the tower, they know that K1's got no ultimates. Already used the Shadow Dance, but the TP's coming oh, in to try and pass away, but Crit able to time it perfectly with the Bushwhack, pulls him back, they take down K1. Lose Fly in return, we'll see if the rest of EG can get out. In fact, they might not want to get out, because backup's arrived, Arbed. He's also ready to Gojira dive sticks. underneath the tier one tower, but indeed he's hit the sixth, they turn with a stun, Gojira! They just able to turn with the kisses, take down oh, Arbed, take down Crit! It started off as a, a smooth move from EG to try and pressure in, take down K1, whilst he didn't have the Shadow Dance, but then they, they tried to go for more, and that was not the move that they were going to get away with against Beast Coast there. A perfect time to hit the six. Beast Coast turn it around, and Arbed, he's going to wish he didn't come down here at all. Oh, yeah. A beautiful latch from Crit here to start it all off, getting him in mid-pounce. But yeah, I don't think they expected so many rotations coming. I don't know if they expected the snap to be that six either. And yeah, Whisper just used ult top, so maybe they thought he wouldn't come here either. Beautiful moves. This Snapfire really kicking at this early game. 3-0-3, three, three, six of the seven kills. Yeah, I mean, just excellent setup there as well from Kajira using the cookie for Whisper, getting him on top of Arbed. And then with that opening stun, easily able to find time to get the follow-up spear. And it just locked down Arbed for the whole ult that was coming in. And the crazy the thing is, too, look at the tower HP in that bottom safe lane. After we see the Ember perhaps getting gone on a little bit. Or see if they can get oh, it. They might. They've got they the, might be able to. Again, the three stuns are oh. there. Arbed a couple of times now, back to back in this area of the map. It's not been a great place for him to be. No, and, and then we do see the tower. It is 100% HP. It has not been touched. This is a brood lane near 12 minutes. That dive not working out at all. See around the mid. Chris ready to set up more. Gets the toss back onto Fly. And of course, back up. It's there. It always is here for Beast Coast. The three of them take down another. Fly falls. We'll see Arteezy turning up to the mid. This is quite an aggressive fight for the Terrapins to be involved in. I don't know if Arteezy wants to be here. The arena's there. I don't know what the, 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 what's going on. Oh, from Arbed dying two times down on the bottom. Arteezy suddenly turns up to a very premature fight in the mid. 12 minutes city stepping up to the mid high ground. You can't do that against Beast Coast. He just had popped his meta too. Wanted to try to come in just for a quick kill onto a core, but Beast Coast, they're too fast around the map. EG's got to give more respect to these movements. Absolutely. This is devastating. Look at Nightfall fall. even too, maybe. Uh, we've just seen it happen to Arbed. We've oh just seen it happen boy. to Arteezy. We've just seen it happen to Nightfall. EG losing course left, right, center here. It's 12 to 2. I mean, this is looking just a thunder, really, the way that the aggression is coming up so early. Even rougher, I think, in this early game. Absolutely. K1 even looking to top. Won't be able to do too much on no. his own. Just steal some Agi. But he's got the Diffusal Blade finished up, so that's also another scare. The fact that Beast Ghost can even start involving the Slark in every single one of these fights. Arteezy can't come back to show up for quite some time. We'll get a quick pick on to, to Stinger here. 
over on the East Coast uh, side of the map. Yeah. Definitely for the, you know, still at the start, you know, EG, whilst they were sort of losing in, in terms of kills, they were getting the farm. Like, they've got to be careful not to sacrifice the, the space that they've been able to maintain on their half of the map, but for going for these aggressive plays and losing these huge kills. That's yeah, devastating. They're trying to look for K1, perhaps secret trying to, but no, he gets in the tree lines. Radiant's top tower is yeah, under attack. This is looking scanning. like a very good start here for Beast Coast, of course. Almost a blink even on the Mars, so... The distancing for TB, like usually the way he wants to play in back lines and hiding in the jungle pretty much farming for most of the game, it's going to be a lot harder now with Whisper having this type of start. Blink at 13 minutes in your offlaner. Quick set up in the mid. Chris. Oh I'll bet. It'll be fun. He's got remnants to play with, but taking okay, a heavy bit of damage. Only, I think, misses one of those lobs. A super farm snap fire. Super rune in nine seconds. East Coast, they'll want to make sure that Arbet doesn't get a hold of that. They have the blink on Chris as well, too. And the rune, and Ooh, it's coming Arbet bottom. It. Arbet able to grab it inside. Chris is out of mana. They're trying to chase. Kind of hard to chase, so between these two. Yeah, further TPs are coming in. He'll, he'll latch on with the Searing Chains, but Arbet knows that he's got to be Arbet. careful. Whisper turns up. Arbet might still be in trouble. I mean, he is indeed. The remnant sort of, was laid down in a, a bit of an awkward spot. And of course, no struggle at all there for Chris to make sure he's there ready and waiting. That's Arbet dead again. And I mean, they did not have the damage at all to try to go for the time. They had the spin yeah. and the Ember, no Flame Guard. That was... And the kills, they're just going to keep rolling in, by the way. Oh, Beast Coast, man. they find Fly out alone. It's 15 to 3 here, 14 minutes in. Beast Coast, there's just no slowing them down here. They're oppressive on every single one of the lanes. Anytime somebody shows on EG, they get cleared out. Oh, look, some spiders as well, too. Whisper says thank you. Level 11 already on this Mars. Anytime anyone shows, it feels like they can That's die now because it. of these double blinks that are set up and from these overleveled supports, they're always going to be able to get the catch on EG. That's some terrifying stuff here from Beast Coast so far. How does EG really get things together now, right? Like, who do they really want to rally behind? It feels like it's going to have to be like when the pipe comes out for Nightfall, which he does have now, so let's see what they can do with it. They're going to try and get something going here off the back of a smoke. Feels difficult still. For Chris here around the mid. TPs are going to come in. Oh, shit, they can take down the Tiny. Steer on the side, able to lay down the O. EG there attempting to reach in to take down Chris, but Chris, he's out and he's alive. He's going to be fine. K1. Artizzi. Tiny in the front of the fight. He's in with the bounce on top of Artizzi. Avalanche as well onto the forward. And Artizzi will be able to get the sun drop on to fly. Artizzi back up to full HP. Ahmed out of the fight. The arena's down. Spear oh. will miss. So they won't be able to hold Artizzi in position. Artizzi's going to be fine for now. Now turns towards K1. Pounce back at the ready. Chris. He's in with a jump though. They've got the call by the four. Kiss is out. He's melting to the deck. And the snap by Kajira takes him down. It's Arbed. Is there more for him to find? He's going to try and keep the fight going, Arbed. Jumps over towards Chris. Chains out in the further end. Let's put the avalanche is back up. Chris will still die. They get a kill and return, EG. Anything more for them to find? I mean, K1, Stinger, and Kajira. They're ready to continue this fight as well. Here, four versus four. They want to keep the action going. They get the bushwhack set up. Onto the Stinger, stun. Into the angle of crit salt. EG find another. Ooh. I mean, they're pretty durable. You're definitely seeing that pipe coming into play. This 30 HP regen Broodmother just never getting oh, low. Two now. Cookie. Let's into see. the blast. But no. no. No further ability to send them back under the tower quite yet. So EG, they may lose oh, RTZ in the fight, but they do take down two. Yeah. It started, I mean, it looked almost kind of disastrous at the start, but I think the sleight of fist actually canceled Whisper's Blink Dagger, and then he had like a little bit of an awkward jump with his uh, ult and spear. That's why they ended up missing. So he's still going to keep going for these plays too. Yeah, EG, they, they're trying to play with the momentum that they were able to start get, to get going a little bit around that mid fight. Do end up losing crit bottom. It does still, it does feel like EG is actually more cool down the line. Even though they're playing into a team that has like Mars ult and the CM ult, it does feel like EG has to be pretty careful if they want to because it feels like they have to invive Arteezy when they go for these type of pushes, and he needs to have meta available, so... Yeah, it does feel like they have to play pretty slow on the side of EG versus Beast Coast, which is scary, because Beast Coast is not going to play slow at all. They're going to just constantly look to hunt. It's going to continue to accelerate, too, because K1, he's got a couple components finished already of that Aghanim. Three pieces done. That's going to make it even easier for him to just stick onto that back line, to get onto Arteezy. Absolutely, and to, to be able to kite him out if yeah. things get dangerous when the meta's up. Okay, Whisper opts to go for his shard early on since he's playing versus that TB. Used to be, used, tends to be one of the most valuable options when you're playing versus illusion cores. He's very farmed, so doesn't hurt him too much to go for that this game. 
See Beast Coast ready to set up around the mid. Let's see if they can get the, the combo off onto our bed. We're going to try with a slight error and immediate reaction. They still find the Avalanche toss combo, but that quick little dodge at the beginning, meaning that the full lockdown couldn't quite be there from Beast Coast. Our bed will be fine. I mean, Kajira's going to go with the kiss. He tries the arena, but won't manage to get the catch. This time, EG able to dodge the combo. Still to the side, though. Fly will be finished off. EG, they try and attempt to Arbet. fight with the arena being missed. Arbet, Remnant at the ready, will be able to dodge out of the range of the Crystal Maiden Ultimate. EG, they'll keep that distance for now. It's easy. Looking for an opportunity to step back in on this, but Beast Coast, they're out with the retreat. They pop the smoke and keep that distance. That's a fresh matter. He just popped it. This could be dangerous position here still for Arteezy. He could still just get popped. He has the pipe aura around him. He's going to need that near him. But all this time, the meta is just taking down. Not getting any farm, not getting any pressure either. It's tier 1 still standing. All tier 1s on the side of Beast Coast standing. What are we here? Saw so a quick move there from Chris and um, whispered down towards the bottom. Maybe seeing if they could catch out whoever turned up to clean up this bottom lane. It is our bed. I don't have the spear just yet. But they definitely have enough damage to control. The max frostbite Arbet, is at the ready. Yeah. If Arbed shows again, that could be Beast Coast. Key to go, and here we have it. Chris is in. Have a large toss. Spearback TPs are coming in, but it's not going to be soon enough right to enough. save him. Arbed taken out by the combo once again from Beast Coast. It's, it looked like he kind of maybe saw them, maybe thought he was going to be tanking up, but no, way too much damage, way too much control that Beast Coast does to have down here. Again, just continuing to make all these beautiful plays. And it's, I think that is going to be, yeah, the Axe is going to be done now for K1 for Hector. It's having a phenomenal game. And they continue to shut down Abed. 0, 4, and 3 on the Ember Spirit. See what sort of a defense EG can put together around these Tier 1 towers. Now the Beast Coast are amping up the pressure on these lanes. They st I mean, it's, a, it's, it's pretty astonishing, right? The team that has the TB and the Brood are the ones that have been able to take a Tier 1, and they've actually lost pretty much all three of theirs in a second here. Beast Coast just really bringing that early action these first 20 minutes. Not really giving any opportunities for that Brood. As we mentioned, you know, as you know, Bobo was talking about, it, they've gotten this Brood a lot of the times, but yep. Beast Coast, they answered it pretty much with at least four or five of the picks in their draft, and so far you're seeing it work pretty damn nice. Absolutely. I mean, we, we saw so obviously the other day in the series that EG played, right? Both games, they were able to get their hands on this SF that they've been winning through the group stages throughout. And it was clearly something that Thunder Away could have planned for. You've yep. got to ask yourself, you know, with the Brood being let through this game, it's probably well, something that Beast Coast had a, a pretty good idea of how to deal with. And so far, it looks pretty good. Ooh, top lane. Whisper and Chris continuing to just pick up these kills wherever they go. I mean, as long as Beast Coast pretty much have a c combination of any two of these heroes, yeah. they've got excellent kill potential. Radiant Damage and control more than necessary. Whisper having uh, continues to have this crazy game. He's top net worth still somehow on this offlane Mars, 8, 1, and 7. I think it's something we've gotten used to, of course, with Whisper Radiant in some of his games where he just totally pops off, attack. but this is ridiculous. EG finally able to get some pressure onto the tier one themselves. Bottom, this tier one should be gone. No interest here from Beast Coast there. Do anything about that one. I've seen K1 get into the triangle. He's got Arteezy at zero mana. So they know that Arteezy can't fight now for the next few moments. They might look to pressure even harder. Or they might even just look at Dyer's okay. top tower is under attack. That's the full BKB right now here. Arteezy, yeah. so we'll feel a little safer in the team fights as long as he's able to get it off before that I, they first might, jump. They might just walk in triangle though, right? Because yeah, Terrorblade, no mana. They know he can't fight. They're going to just try to claim this area. Maybe get some vision in the area too. Everyone very afraid. They're like, let's rally around the pipe. Everyone stand near Nightfall. Make sure that we're okay versus the burst damage. EG, you see that? I'm thinking about trying to set things up onto Whisper, but not an easy hero to go for at and, all. And he's got a BKB coming out of the courier right now. So even if they try for it the next time, they might just get fully surprised and turned on. I can, he's just so farmed on this Mars. 209 last hits. Smoke up from EG. They want to try and take this fight already. The Whisper's in. He's able to get the combo there. The two-man spear onto RTZ. The Avalanche farm. Oh, my. It's RTZ and Crick caught out by Whisper. EG, wow. is there anything they can find in return? They're trying to go for the Stinger. They will be able to take out the CM. K1 on the back lines. He's going straight for Fly. And a Spear pushing back Arbed and Nightfall. Arbed did have a remnant of the ready to get out, but Fly won't escape. Neither will Nightfall. And Avalanche from Chris puts a stop to his DP out. There's four dead on EG. They're trying to, to get out and look for these fights. 
but Beast Coast, they're just prepared for them every single time. And this, of course, is the problem with how good Beast Coast is at jumping EG. RTZ just doesn't have the chance to get his BKB off. It, Look at this jump it, whisper. chain stunts every single time, and they all are just following up each other perfectly, right? Chris comes out of nowhere and just come, cleans it up. That's just amazing, really, from Beast Coast. Every time, more than prepared for every single fight. Now they get a rush. That's so smooth here from them. The kills, you know, 24-7. Look at, like, look at Gojira, right? We, I mean, for me, his early game has been absolutely ridiculous. Him and Whisper, 7-0 and 13 on the snap fire. He's kind of set that whole tempo from that bottom fight with the kisses. Yeah, they're, feels good. they're really crushing this game right now. EG. And we said, you know, maybe that pipe was going to be something they could perhaps try to rally around. It has not been the case. Uh, they I don't fight, know what they the next fight through is. it. Yeah. They fight through it. You know, sure, the, the magical's getting reduced a bit, but they've still got a heavy bit of physical, a big... Big old punch, of course, coming out from the Mars, the Tiny, the Slug, after the stats build up with the Essence Shift. A lot of things that you have to be very, very scared of if Beast Coast are the ones starting the fight. Yeah, it's like they have this Sven, who's got, who's got this war cry for Arteezy, but Arteezy's like, I don't need armor, I need to just survive. I need more HP and some type of more magic resist, but they've got really all they can do for him. And Beast Coast just keeps getting onto him. Whisper. I mean Every single one. So for EG now, you know they, 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 you know, they did try and smoke out, look for a fight with the BKB on Arteezy. Now that there's an Aegis on K1, do you just have to hold back on that plan, wait for the four minutes to pass, or do you still have to take that risk, try and make that move? I don't know. I don't know what they can really do. The pressure is wow. so immense, really, from how ahead all three of these cars are. Who can they really burst down? It's got to be like some type of support. So pretty difficult at the moment. Beast Coast just really controlling the map perfectly. I don't think you could ask for a more crisp 24 minutes. Oh, it's been kill after after kill after kill. Kill a minute, right? It really has been, yeah. And it's on the it's not like it's on the supports every single time. Sure, fly. You know he's got he's got eight deaths. He's got a lot because he's had to soak for the TB. But look at the deaths on the course too, right? Zero three on Arteezy, zero four Abed, three kills on Nightfall. It's been great pressure on every single one of those cores from Beast Coast. I mean, what what would you sort of consider the the next potential? chance or, or sort of item that the eg one of their causes is going to be able to pick up could give them the a better shot of being able to take these team fights what are, what are they looking towards next as the next sort of power spike that they'll be able to to get towards against this pressure of beast Coast? i mean it's the bkbs that are going to come out for both of the cores the ember probably needs one too but the problem is that they're playing into the double bkb already actually the triple bkb that's going to be coming out from the cores of beast Coast. so it's it's just not an easy thing to do at all it feels Crit. good to be this good chased down by whisper and this bottom lane, tier two in trouble. Not something that EG is going to be able to do too much about right now. They've just got to stay away from Beast Coast. Scramble towards these next items on their cores yeah, and not prepared to fight. It's like they have to avoid fights. And even when these situations get into the point where they have to take a fight, I don't know how they're going to really do it. They're going to have to have some complete miracle where the Terror Blade's able to sit in the back and just wail on targets. But even then, they're so durable. These these cores are just so tanky on the side of Beast Coast. And they're not easy to hit either. You know, that Slark that slipper has so many different ways to just reset in and out of fight. And he doesn't even have Shard yet. So that's going to make it so even everyone else is going to be a lot slipperier too for our TZ to stick on too. We'll push back the TP top tower just from crit attack. though. The rest of EG able to continue to stay out on the map at least. Still being able to farm despite Beast Coast being as close as they are to EG's base right now. And swing over towards the mid Beast Coast. Look to, to push towards another tier two. Again, attempting to force EG back into a defensive position. I think we're going to see Beast Coast start to be very, like, much more I mean, out in a few moments. Stinger trying to go for him here. He's able to put the Ghost Hep to get a bit of the ultimate off. RTZ will manage to put the BKB in with the match, so they're able to take down Stinger. He has to run, though. He with does. the BKB, he just has to book it up. Meta BKB to run. That says everything about the current game state. A whisper now, godlike on the Mars. He almost, I mean, he's on his way to his refresher. He's pretty close to having it already. That is, I mean, that's definitely the most farm Mars I think I've ever seen. 14k net worth at 26 minutes. That's insane. This is crazy. Level 18 as well. Immediately kill the courier too. Nightfall. Oh, smile. Chris Luck here. DD in the bottle, ready for the next jump. He's got the echo finished back up to yep. disassembling it for BKB. That's a huge amount of burst between the magical and physical. If he jumps any target there, they're probably gone. Maybe RTZ survives through it. And the thing even is, that, he's going to be left so low after Chris is in and, and done with him. The thing is, too, they can jump pretty recklessly on all three cores because they can probably yep. just BKB reset out of the fight right afterwards. CG. Now kind of have to watch their T2 just drop while their TZ tries to farm some farm. But yeah, BKB on cooldown, meta on cooldown. The whole map is Beast Coast's.
I mean, even if he had those, the map is still pretty much there. Man, K1. He knows now with his Zags, and of course with a minute left on the Aegis, he can start to tease around with EG right underneath that tier 4s. Look how spooked they are, he forces the Wraith pack, but that's how scared Nightfall is even though he's at his tier 3. And we mentioned earlier, of course, that Wraith pack is going to get cleared every fight from the little Shredder. Got the setup on a Chris, good full stuff there to get Chris out of the combo, away from the Sharpshooter. Early Kiss is being thrown. Bit of a whiff. Chris is falling a little low, he's holding on to the BKB. And I bet he's thinking about committing towards some Chris there, but jump forward. In fact, it's K1 that's going to be the one jumping on him, and now they're follow They'll be able to keep him locked down. Oh, he didn't jump. He got. He continued fighting inside. The pounce waited and waited. Didn't want to jump away. Didn't yeah, expect a whisper. And of course, but just before this fight, just so close to the BKB on the Ember, about a couple of hundred gold. He was away, Arbed, but didn't have it for this fight. And now beyond the racks, Beast Ghost. They're ready to just continue diving in. Artizi's TP'd over, but he's oh low on mana. He has his BKB to walk. Away. He has. He's oh, TP'd boy. in. It's a BKB and a move back to the base. So he'll heal up. But even when he's done, he won't be able to present himself here towards this barracks defense. As Beast Ghost, they'll push on, force out the fortification. I mean, they probably click on Whisper and they're like, oh god, he has another full round of everything because he has this refresher. We can't take the fight. And no BKB. Rax is going to drop. EG can do nothing but watch. Straight over towards the mid. They may have lost the Aegis Beast Coast, but I, I don't think they're going to feel they need to back off anytime soon. He still has 72, or 72 Agi, so wanted to get a little bit of poke. Now they'll reset the lane. Okay, they good position. They will. Yep. Give a little bit of respect to, to, to EG. I mean, they're happy to sort of play this one out. They also just got like 2,000 gold on every single hero, right? Like everyone just got a full item injection. Sure. They're going to pick those up, wait for the next fight, clean up the area of the top side, get that tower, yeah. and just wait for EG to walk kind of into them because they can just take any fight on Beast Coast here. Lot of money on Gajira as well. Looks like he's going to be picking up the Lotus here for the team. Bash has just been grabbed up by K1. Yes. up. They're so far. Uh, this this Snapfire is getting close to being at the same levels of the Amber and the Brutes. <laughs> yeah, he's got yeah, he's got Lotus done. So tons of different ways to protect his teammates. Yep. Great spells to either any, dispel. Anybody can go in. Yeah, amazing things to reflect, to protect versus Sunder. I mean, this is a godly Lotus game. I mean, that's the thing is, right? Now, Beast Coast, as we see so far this game, they're, they're the kind of team that will go in without these items. Yeah. You know? So now that they've got them, they're going to be uh, stepping it up to the max in terms of how aggressive and uh, and sort of, you know, they'll look to move in and dive wherever they want to go. And look at this hero damage, right? Like we were mentioning Gojira a lot this game, and you see why when we bring that up. 14.4k. I mean, he's 8 0 14 yeah. The man hasn't died this game. They banned, you know, in the first phase, banned his clockwork too, and he got his snap fire. Nice. He's totally popping off. He's definitely making quite the case here for, for maybe that snap being more of a priority. Invisibility. EG. All right, they've grouped up. RTZ was able to finish his next time. He's picked up the Silver Edge. All right, I mean, we'll see what it's going to be able to do. Do they even have the damage to go through any of these cores? Will they kill any of them? I mean, the question. If we're talking about Gajira, he's been quite the problem. So getting rid of him at the start of the fight, okay. not a bad move here for EG. See if they can get more. Beast Coast very quick to drop down the arena. Now K1 is able to jump over towards Arbet. Arbet has got the BKB done for this fight, but there is a cost to bash on K1, so Arbet's got to be careful how close he keeps the slot. K1 turns over towards Nightfall. Nightfall able to get down to the low ground. Whisper will deal with Fly. A God's Rebuke to take him down. K1 jumps forward. He's looking to hunt down the spider. Nightfall attempting to juke around the trees. A buyback comes out from Fly. EG. Another BKB for Chris is about to come to an end. RTZ attempting to close the gap on him. They want to get one of these cores so bad. I mean, Chris is getting pretty low. Town with the avalanche, but RTZ yes. is able to finish him off. Stinger as well looks to be in trouble. Pops the Ghost Scepter. They'll block him up. RTZ will claim another double kill for Arzul. All right, seems like the plan is get on top of the Snapfire. Remove Gojira from the Not a the bad fight. plan. <laughs> Not a bad plan at all, as we saw there. They only had to commit one buy back there, yep. EG. Flight. Getting back in on the action. I mean, it's the first time EG's gotten anything going there. Absolutely. Right so they need any type of momentum. It's still a long ways and still needs, I mean, quite a lot more of those, but at least they finally do get a kill onto that core. As you say, a, a different approach to the fight, one that we haven't seen from them, or at least them be able to do so far this game, getting Gojira, killing him for the first time this game, and did end up giving that bit of an opening that, I mean, as we saw in the damage numbers, once you sort of remove that the highest DPS hero from the team, things are probably going to go a little bit better for you in these team fights. Yeah. Yeah, they were able to get a good wraparound and just good connection because the Mars ult also didn't connect perfectly. And saw Slark a bit low mana. They all just were a bit awkward about going for a full commitment on the fight on Beast Coast. AG still needs quite a lot more of those. Even though you see TB, he's getting close to that Mars net worth. He's actually ahead of the Slark now. As we said, there's still a lot of things that get on him. Still a tough game for him to carry. Let's have a look. I see sort of how Beast Coast come back out onto the map. 
after suffering that loss. That was a bit of a rough team by the, the roughest they've had. They are pretty much the only rough one they have had this game. Of course, they're straight back over onto EG's half of the map. They know that they still have this lead 13k advantage, 30 to 11. DD rune bottom, and Roche is about to spawn two seconds. The spider is constantly being sent across the map to kind of scout it out. Sure. See if Beast Coast goes and checks it themselves. Chris is hunting, though. He's still smoked up with that DD, and he has that small crit. Good burst most heroes. And yeah, they're probably going to go back and check that Roche in a few seconds since they have all this ward. These wards set up, they have all the lanes in good position. Chris still kind of looking for something, but he's just going to catch the next wave. And now it's scouted. EG, they have hit the timing here with their the okay. smoke themselves. They'll they'll try and get over See what towards they can do. this area, knowing that... Potential is there for Roshan to be back up. So many eyes early on Arteezy. If he can actually just stay alive in yep. the fights, he does, got him. He, he does a to. fair bit of damage. He's crit with the jump. I mean, it's not a bad jump again. They found Gajira to start the fight. They're in onto the snap fight and taking him down. K1 turns over towards Crit. Crit trying to get away, but the pounce is in. Whisper goes in with the arena, but the BKBs are out from EG. You see Arbet look to chase down Stinger. Stinger will die before the TP is successful. The BKBs from both sides are about to come to an end. He's able to continue on further. I mean, they're, the BKBs, I mean, it looks to be they're EG. They're themselves now. See, having the meta still going, that they feel the stronger around the pit. They were able to eliminate the two supports. Whisper still has another round of ult. He's gonna refresh. He does get seen. The illusion's on him. Chris is in with the jump. Three-man avalanche. There's the arena. We'll be able to lock down Arbet with the spear. They've taken out the ember. Arbet does have a buyback available if he wants to commit towards this Roshan fight. And Nightfall trying to escape the arena, but he's trapped in. Take down by the God's Rebuke. Whisper, Whisper dies in return. He'll immediately buy back to get over towards the Roshan once again. But Roshan so is falling fast into EG. Chris is in with the jump. Arteezy is pretty low. The toss goes him. there. The line of the spear. Arteezy goes down. As EG, they attempted to finish off the Roshan. But they didn't respect the buyback there from Whisper and the ability for Beast Coast to jump into the pit once more. So many ways, as we mentioned from earlier, it's just tons of ways for them to jump in and out of these fights as K1. What a pounce, gets the catch. They're able to reset, right? Even though they lost Gojira, didn't have the buyback, Beast Coast is able to reset in and out of the fights a few times and they do get that catch. They get it onto Abed and then Chris gets the perfect toss up onto RTZ. <laughs> And the excellent calls here continue from Beast Coast in terms of the moves that they made. You saw no hesitation from Whisper with that buyback. Yep. A pretty admirable fight, though, for being 14,000 gold behind from EG. Finding a pretty decent decent chunk of kills, but now they're going to lose some pretty massive objective damage, maybe even losing all of the racks here. I mean, it's, it's going to go down pretty fast here to the right clicks of oh, oh, Chris on the tiny. And K1, he still has some stacks, too, so top... They've got one more glyph. I may, he's may respawning, but no meta when he's up 30 seconds. And man, they have one more fight as well, EG. They're going to have to pull everything together here for this last stand against Beast Coast. It's Beast Coast. They'll give their respect. They'll back it up. Further big items being picked up. AC is complete here for Chris. Yeah, they're like, we don't need to really fully rush it here. Pick up these items. Still have ages for a few minutes. Almost a hex finished up also on Whisper, so. EG looking to maybe take advantage of the fact that Beast Coast might be kind of chilling back here. Maybe they could catch something big. Yeah, the moves they, they do make at, the, at this point, they seem risky, but they have to take these risks, EG. Yeah. They're it's sending the only way they get back into the game. Yeah, they're sending the spiders to scout all over. We're seeing them nightfall up top lane, so they're trying to find somebody bottom side. And look who it is again. Eyes. There's Gojira, he's able to get the four stuff off in time to break away from the bushwhack, but still RTZ chases him out. A further force and a jump with the cookie will dodge the sharpshooter, so Gojira this time will live. And now EG's got to run. And they certainly have it, the snap fires alive. Things are probably going to go rather bad for EG. As Fly goes down, RTZ holding on to his BKB for now. They know where he is though. Whisper, he gets the, get the spear. Oh, BKB is there from Arteezy and the immediate bash. response is the bashes are there from K1 though. Arteezy needs help, but he needs it now. He's the bash is there. The silence as well. Arteezy goes down. No buyback available for him as Beast Coast. They're ready to go for more. Arbed able to BKB TP out. But EG, Whisper. they've got to try and hold here with just the three of them against the full five man push from Beast Coast. No Arteezy for nearly a minute. All right, that's Mega Creeps for sure. Arteezy stepped up, 
got speared. I mean, there was this fight that they tried to get a catch onto the snap, and they were fully surrounded. The, the two times they've managed to come out top was when they've been able to catch Goodyear out, so that they couldn't. And indeed, they'll tap out. There's no coming back from this position. GG is called Beast Coast here in game one. Looking as, as hot as ever, really, here against EG. A couple outside of the two rough fights, it was pretty much perfection it from really Beast Coast from, from start to end. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to give so much credit, really, to this this top lane, right? Yep. The, the Mars and the Snapfire, they really set the tempo for this game. I mean, Chris Luck, too, of course, all of them had their parts in it, but that top... Thank you very much, Slax. Yes, the, the game underway now here. Game two between Evil Geniuses and Beast Coast Fog. Very this nice. is Evil Geniuses' last chance, right? If they, if they don't hold on here, yep. that is it for them. And after such an incredible group stage, which, if anything, just gives more credit to how well Thunder Awaken and now Beast Coast are playing against them. You know, what do EG have to do to try and get back that magic that they had days before? They just have to start, just clean up this early game, right? It really, everything fell apart but before the 15 minute mark, it felt like in the last game. So let's see if they can do it this time. They did go for this Ember again, which has been having some difficulties. Of course, we've seen a lot of these lane dominators been able to punish the Ember so much. See what Ibid's going to be able to do this time. It can be a little difficult versus the Lesh, but you can still, you know, do a lot with your Flame Garden, with your slight dodges and stuff like that. So we'll see how he fares versus the Lesh. And in the mid game, right? Because Ember, Nyx Assassin can be really troublesome to play this Ember in a lot of situations. Excited to see sort of how the carry matchup works this time around. It's what the second time today that we will have seen the, a life stealer wow. played into a, an illusion carry. Earlier we had it against a PL. Uh, worked out, I believe, they're right with this, the arm that into Miona build. I imagine we're going to see sort of a similar direction being taken by Arteezy this game. Do you like sort of that approach in terms of what carry to, to pick into an Argus Siren lineup? I think people just also, you want to make sure you get like this good lane as well, and it's a hero that actually can, you know, like you said, you itemize, you will be able to withstand the pressure of these illusions at some point. So I think it can work, and he also does have, it's not like it's just him on his own, right? He does have the Ember as well too, so if it was just a Life Sealer versus these illusion cores, then I'm always very worrisome. But even earlier we saw, when it was the Life Sealer versus the PL, yep. he had like an Earth Shaker, he had all these different elements to help him as well too. So I think it's, you know, it's not always like the best pick to deal with the illusion, but if you have some other compliments, it can work out fine. So we'll see how that all goes. And yeah, I'm going to be looking a lot at Abed. I think last game, it was one of the rougher games I think I've ever seen from him. So let's see how much he's going to be able to improve this time. Yeah, for sure. The, those sort of early movements that he went for just did not pay off. So we have to see if he, he has a bit of a better chance getting that early momentum that he wants to be able to find to, to, to allow him to, to continue to make aggressive plays throughout the mid game as an Ember Spirit and, and just be able to be a part of EG just closing down the map and limiting the areas that K1 feels safe to sort of place himself. Yeah. And let's see how much, uh, let's see how, how well of a game Nightfall is able to have this time too, because he tends to be the kind of the guy for EG that really sets the tempo and the pressure. So let's see what he's going to be able to do on the Beastmaster this time, because he is playing versus Chen, one of the harder counters in a way versus the Beast as the game progresses, because even when you get your Helm of Overlord, he can get his shard, he steals your Ancients. There's so many plays that you can do as a Chen versus Beast. So let's see how Nightfall is going to adapt versus. Uh, of course, top lane as well, you know, Whisper. Last pick of the draft, getting the, the Brewmaster this game. We saw him pop off once again, as he has been in many of the performances for Beast Coast. Last game on the Mars, getting in the Brewmaster. Yeah, Beast Coast, they, they've got to feel just as good, uh, if not even better than, than what they're able to see Whisper on in, in terms of heroes, because this is one that you can completely control the team fights with. And they will have two different ways of completely controlling team fights, right? They have Naga Siren and Brew, so they have a lot of different ways where it's like, oh, this fight's not ours, we can fold this engage. Or this is a fight where, oh man, it looks like we can stop them, we can actually fully around them with the Brew and the Naga Siren. So right now, no one really being left too far behind Beastmaster. We see a little bit of pressure, of course, from that Chen, but he's going to go for the Axe route, not having any of those summons early on. Should be able to catch up. But Naga Siren, it does mean K1's just going to have a full free farm lane, which always tends to be pretty problematic when K1's able to do stuff like that. That being said, Arteezy's also getting his full free farm. And we are seeing, of course, the switch of like, like five Marana, again, right? We've seen him multiple times now today. Crit playing it in the top lane. And we have the CM playing bottom. And as, as was mentioned in that pre-game interview too, you know, Gajira, Nyx Assassin, very much one of the, the supports of the tournament, it really feels like in terms of heroes. I mean, he's what, what makes this trouble. so good right now? He, he's still got a Mango and a, a stun back in seven seconds. I mean, he Might looks be pretty dead. I, maybe he can get the deny. No, won't be able to do so. So Crit will manage to chase him down and get that first blood. Five Mirana, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to start seeing that in your phones probably. Looks, I mean, honestly, if you go for like the chase when people yeah. are pulling creeps, it's pretty good. You do pretty decent, right? The 
harassment and stuff. Nicely done from Crit. And now also, so looking at this mid matchup, we see the Ember doing pretty well. He actually has potential to get rotations from the arrow from Crit too, if they do get a connection. And he actually Oh, hits. they do. Uh -oh. And with that, the Flame Guard's up. He'll run down Chris. Won't okay. look to dive the tower, but you saw the potential there. Chris, very, very fortunate he was able to get the stun off himself at the same time. So. The damage was limited that Abed could get out onto Chris during that stun from Crit. I was gonna, I was gonna say, I wonder if Abed does look to grab an early point in chains to set up for these type of early rotations, but I mean, didn't need it that time. But Chris will get some help, of course. Gojira coming in, and they will be double checking these runes. An arrow connects again. Crit able to take that one away. <laughs> Some good early positioning here from Crit. I like the how he's playing it too, because he knows now Lifestealer's in a 1v1 matchup versus the Brew, so Arteezy's just fine. He's going to be able to free farm. Whisper's going to get farmed too, but Arteezy's under no pressure here. Yep. Actually getting some decent hits perhaps onto Whisper. There's a lot of creeps though. Like two waves, over two waves adding up. Uh, anything that Beast Coast Heroes can do with that sort of pressure that's going to build up underneath the tower with these waves? Not with these two heroes. The Brewmaster and the Nyx going versus the Lifestealer, it's pretty difficult. They can hurt Crit a little bit, but I don't think up here they can almost ever pressure RTZ. And it's a, that's the reasoning why we did see that Lifestealer pick, you know, we were talking about so much. Yeah. They have this Naga Siren and everything. It's not the greatest for Naga, but in the entirety of the game, versus Lesh, versus Nyx, and even versus that last pick, Brew, pretty good game for the Lifestealer. Just the rage in general is going to be really effective. Oh, for sure. And you know, of course, because that brew was the, the ultimate last pick, you would imagine well, when Beast Coast were grabbing it, they weren't expecting it to, to be able to have its strengths in the laning stage. No, right? It's for, for all the other parts of the game. So Absolutely. This is all all as expected for Beast Coast in and terms of the outcome of top lane. Yeah, and it's for like the itemization of everything too in mid game because he's going to go for this Wraith Pact, maybe actually, maybe in this game, because he is playing versus Murana, and Murana is kind of a Wraith Pact killer, so maybe he will opt for a different type of build. We'll see. I know he's got the earn queued. You have learned nothing. And there's just a crazy amount of wave pulling going on here. It's mid lane. And Gojira's just completely abandoned top. He's like, I can't slow down our team. Yeah. So all three lanes. I mean, it makes sense right, yeah. Because Whisper's still going to be able to soak up the golden Dyer's XP. Yep. Or rather, would get the, the solo element of it so he can get that six as soon as possible. Yeah, and he can he can pull the lane himself. And yep. there's not really a way that he dies to the Moran and the Lifesteal. He can just, you know, drunken haze and run out of there. Oh, and the same to be said, you know, in, in turn, you know, crit. Ooh. He's like, well, I'll head around the map and, and continue to just hover around the mid lane. Awesome. Huge play from Gojira. Stops the TP back from Abed from the low ground stun. That new stun cast range, that's 750. Pretty much everything there. <laughs> the movements. EG will still be able to maintain control around the, the six yeah. minute power in. It is a haste room for Abed. A pretty important one, really, for him to get, because he did get that TP cancelled for the fill-up. Smile. Chris Luck will go bottom. We'll be able to get his own bounty rune to fill it up. And we do see K1 now starting to get some jungle. A slight lead in the laning phase here for EG. Nothing too crazy. About 200 or 300 on each of the counterparts. Does mean this is Helm. Helm is pretty much done. Down bottom for the beast. And he does actually start skilling these boars, so the Chen's gonna be able to turn them against them. We'll see which, which sort of route Arteezy wants to go with his build. It, 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 when you are trying to scale up against Illusion Carry, do you still always get the arm at first, or is there potential to to kind of go for that Maelstrom or, or farming item a, a bit quicker? I always I, I always think armor is the most core item ever on yeah. Lifestealer. Okay. That you kind of can't deviate too much, but we'll see. I mean, right now he's just got the phase and the Bracer. Maybe he's feeling like he's not going to get it early enough that he does want to go Maelstrom, but I, I think armor Maelstrom is fine. He's got the Ember, as we said, so he's already got a hero that can also deal with the Naga sometimes earlier on. But we shall see. Maybe he goes for more right click. I don't know. Nope. He's, he's going to get it up. I mean, this is, I think, the temptation, you know, to Tempting. skip the armlet sometimes when, you, when you're trying to play this matchup. And, and you know you're going to be farming for the most part. You're yeah. not looking to turn up to fights with that first item. You're just looking to clear through the jungle, clear through your half of the map. I guess that's the reason, right? He's under no contestion. Even yeah. when they do bring heroes to his lane, he's like, they can't actually, like, threaten me too much. So I'm just going to be full free farm game. Okay. See Crip and Fly trying to get a bit of information. Deep in Beast Coast half of the map. Yeah, try to slow down this Radiant Naga Siren. Since they see the Chen just like soaking down bottom, they know that Hector is just full jungling. Didn't actually find anything though. Nightfall, still level five. Might be able to get Gajira hit. A frostbite. And with both spells on cooldown, has the Ferry Fire, but another leap's there from Crit. He'll get and take the kill. Chris able to find Fly in return back in the river. Let's get a trade for it. Abed with the DD. 
very strong rune on the Ember Spirit early on here with the Max Light. Yeah, Chris has got to stay right back. Yeah. I mean, he knows that if Arbed hits another Slight, uh, very likely that Arbed will dive the tower for him. So yeah, perhaps Chris gets right back and into the triangle. Perhaps you just wait for that one to disappear before you walk back toward that mid lane for sure. Yeah, but that does mean tower pressure. Arbed and Crit able to hit mid tower. TP to mid, we get the bottle refill in time. Piece. And yeah, talking about Abed, you know, we saw that he had a pretty bit of a rough one in the last game. He actually has a much easier game this time versus all these, you know, doesn't have as many stuns that he has to worry about. Last game, it's like everyone had a disable. This time, it's the Nyx and the Lash that he has to worry about mostly, so a lot sure, freer yeah. of time. But Carapace is really annoying. It, it is very, so. Very much. Bottom Nightfall. I'm going to drop the roll straight away to give him a chance to run. Uh-oh. And Whisper. Primal splits to the ready and already a bit of a body block coming in with K1 and the Micro of his illusions. Leaves no escape for Nightfall. So, Raw expended. Wasn't able to get out alive. At the same time, at another entry point of the jungle, they find Crit hovering around the stairs. So a couple of kills for Beast Coast. And they make sure that EG does not feel too safe coming back over to their half of the map. And Whisper, he actually used the Thunderclap, totally missed the, the, the neutral creeper, otherwise he would have probably been able to kill it a little earlier. Might still be able to get it with the next one. But making sure he actually was maximizing when they used the split to kill the beast and- Oh, the bird! Okay, take it. When he used the split to kill the beast earlier, he actually used the dispel to kill the boar and everything too, so he actually maximized quite beautifully on this brew. At the moment, sitting the, the lowest uh, of the cores in terms of net worth, but if anything, from his previous performances are to go by, you, you know the Whisper's going to be catching up very, very soon. Oh, he always ends up incredibly rich here, even from the offlane position. And he wants to be a little bit more like active of moving around, just because he doesn't want to sit in the lane versus a lifestealer so much, so look sure. for these constant kills and pressure on the lanes. Yeah, and of course we'll get to the point in this game where it's it's K1 playing a Naga Siren. He's exactly. going to be soaking up all the waves, he'll be taking the majority of the farm that presents itself on the map. So a bit, sort of a different spread of, of value that you'll expect to see grow for, for each of Beast Coast cores this time round. See what you can find. Whisper shows himself he's quite durable though. The split, still on cooldown. TP reactions coming in. See if EG can get the kill quick enough. They're struggling to kill him as, at sort of the pace that they would hope for. RTZ continues to push on, will get him. They lose crit and return. We'll see if RTZ can get out of this. He has the infest, is able to jump into our bed, and our bed with a remnant at the ready will be able to deliver RTZ back to safety. That was close. If that stun catch, it actually almost catches the both of them there. Could potentially be a disaster, but they do end up cleaning up Whisper. They do get a trade out of it though, so he's close. It's not the most fussed about it. We did see how tanky he was there, that brew. Even though he's only got the one point in the Drunken Brawler, he did have that Ogre Frost Mage, I believe, that Ice Arm. I did, yeah. They are able to buff him up, but yeah. quite able to keep him alive long enough. A, a nice read there from EG to know that they could get away with, with that sort of an aggressive play. Something they struggled to do in the early stages of game one. Already 11 minutes in, five to three. EG definitely going to be feeling a lot better out of the laning stage than they did at this point in the first game of the series. Absolutely, I mean, night and day difference. Nice stinger. I mean, look at this positioning from the Chen. He's <laughs> up here alone trying to pressure Arteezy in the tower. He's getting a lot of damage on top. See bottom lane. Another split and another attempt at a kill on towards Nightfall's Beastmaster. He'll turn with the Roar. Oh, Roar's the Wind Panda. Make sure you can get away. Okay, in the Moonlight Shadow, they'll be able to reset. That was a cool move, though. Um, while we were looking, you know, the play happening bottom, the Chen was actually making sure that he kept the catapult alive as long as possible, top with his creeps, and just like kind of sacrificing them. Oh, good change setup. Ooh. All right. Not quite able to land it there, a little too far away, too much travel time. But they're forcing them away from the tower. So tier one, likely to fall here with that dominated creep also coming in. Totally different game state, as we said. This time they're able to get two towers on the side of EG early game. Beast Coast not able to set that tempo yet. Might be able to get a stinger here, fly. He's got him. Quick frostbite and the setup's there for Arteezy to pick up a nice bit of bonus gold. Gets the kill. I mean, look at his positioning there, a little a little aggressive there from Stinger. I mean, he's, he's been sort of living life oh. up on this top area of the map for quite some time. The arrow, oh, that's oh. swiftly done there. Arrow is already coming in, and Arbet able to make sure that Chris is held in position for it to hit bang on target. I mean, these two Beast Ghost heroes completely in no man's land, nobody even relatively close to them. The ward, of course, coming into play there from EG, kind of seeing that the Lesh was alone in that top lane. Good movements, five to five. 
Still seeing the Nog at the top, but not by too much. MTZ is keeping up. And he's actually going to go back for the armor. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. For sure. I mean, as you said, you know, armlet. It's such you a cool always want to have it on Live Stealer, but of course, going for it this way around the Maelstrom into the armlet when he knew that he was going to be able to play this whole top half of the map completely uncontested. You're going to end up with the two items quicker than if yeah. you did it the other way around. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. Now they have double Maelstrom, so the Naga sign for the early game is showing up. Pretty difficult for Hector to really do so. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. How close are we to this Helm of the Overlord? Helm of the Overlord is just about done. 600 gold. And Stinger, I mean, he, if he wants to save up the gold, he can do the option of going for that shard early. Right now he's got that drum queued up, but we'll see if he opts against it if he sees Nightfall. Pick up that Helm. Say they get around mid. Yeah, almost Bloodstone also on Chris Luck. But still quite fragile. We see the amount of burst damage that EG has this game. It's very different than the last time. Oh, for sure. And of course, RTZ. In terms of the nature of the life stealer, he's able to put that rage and just get straight on top of a hero like the Lash. Yeah. Oh, this farming this was Lash top. Yeah. Let's have a look here. We'll have a quick oh, replay. Let's go run it. What is this? Go to trade top. Nah, I'll, nah, I'll just drop it. I'm gonna run bottom. Naga's top. Naga's top. Real Naga's top. Naga's top. Naga's top. Naga's top. Naga's top. There we go. Some very calm and calm communication there between EG as they make that movement up towards that top lane, get the kill. Yeah, they're just kind of, it sounded like they're mostly just calling the positioning of where all these heroes are, where the Naga, oh, he's keeping tags, of course, of where K1 is. Because if they look to make an aggressive move, have to be careful, because that song can come in, things can get turned around, so keeping tabs of where K1 is definitely going to be important. Quite game though in comparison to the last one. Five to five. Yeah, which I think will come as a, a big relief to EG. You know, very much in the early points of last game, the struggle was just kind of keeping Beast Coast under control. Beast Coast were getting away with so many kills, so many aggressive plays. This time around, EG able to match it and get that little bit more value from the map so far. Slight lead here, one goal, one K gold advantage. At some point, they definitely do want to apply a little bit more pressure. They will, of course, have these like Maelstroms and Mjolnirs, of course, for the Naga Siren, but you know, we see how much you can actually just like cut the waves. They don't want to constantly be like dealing with all these waves at some point that Hector will be addressing, so let's see what they do. Because their lineup, it's a little bit more pickoff oriented, you could say, on EG in comparison to Beast Coast, which when they do have the Brew ult and they have the Chen ult, it's a lot more team fight centric. You can see here with these moves, EG trying to, to find with Jared the map K1 is playing from with, with his main hero, but good read from K1, he'll back out of the map completely, so they won't find him. He can be fight ready. He's actually gone for the defusal build early on here on the Naga Siren, so could even look to, if he gets like a grab onto Abed ever, that could be pretty much set up for a kill. And now the Roche. Hey, yeah, I mean, the Beastmaster in his army. Decent damage as well from Arteezy. They, got the they can tank this up with the summons and, and look to go for this. Yep. Oh, they're, they're rotating over though. They're, they're taking it down pretty quick though, EG. So Beast Coast, they'll have to make a move soon if they want to try and stop this. They do have this in a second. The Naga's not. It's already gone. Ah, bad. Able to get the kill, get the Aegis. We'll see Beast Coast now popping the ultimates. Whisper leading him with the primal split, but EG, they themselves have split up. Look at Crit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're gonna see him now. Moonlight comes to an end, so Crit will die. Oh, and also they catch fly, it looks like. Oh, Arbet's also gotta be a bit cautious. He has the remnant, they're ready to dodge the split up. But indeed, the two supports have to be in trouble. Fly's gonna do a fair bit of damage to Whisper with the ultimate, but he will still slowly die. Back up towards the mid, actually, Kajira's able to get the stun out of the two of them, but Nightfall right, has the roll ready, turns towards Kajira to take out the Nyx Assassin, and now Arteez, he's ready to chase down more, gets a double, takes out Stinger as EG. He might be able to keep this fight going. Change there from Arbet, but he's starting to lose his mana. Chris turns, looks for the stun, but a nice sidestep there from Arbet. Arbet still ticking down very low. That's the Aegis gone. As he's down the ones, they've got to be careful about this Lash. Chris charging through the middle of the fight. So it a burn down Nightfall. So they can kite him out and control him further. TPs are coming in. They're surrounding the Lash track, but they're being careful how they commit for this. They know that Chris is very, very strong here on the Lash. And EG, they won't be able to hold him back. So Chris manages to get back out of there. A nice bit of action for, for EG overall. Sure, you know, Beast Coast, they're able to take that Aegis quite quickly out the hands of Arbed. But RTZ able to turn up, get some kills. He's got a, a continued clean scoreline here. 4 0, zero on the Lifestealer and enough money to pick up that Sanj. So now between the Maelstrom, the Armlet, and the Sanj, this Lifestealer is pretty darn strong 17 minutes in. He can absolutely turn up to the Fleetish Fights as we've seen. And he's not easy for Beast Coast to deal with. No, absolutely not, Chris. We've got the arrow on him. Kajira's ready to back him up. Turns with the stun. 
will hold back Crit with that stun, and now Crit turns, heals up with the Bloodstone. It's the split up onto Fly. Crit tries to leap away, still ends up dying to the DPS. Constant battles. Cruel, just 30 seconds until it's back up after all that finishes. And honestly, I mean, out of all of it, it looks like Chris actually comes out most ahead. Right? That's that true, I guess. coming back up at the end of the fight, able to replenish him and kind of walk through and reset. Pretty huge for him. He's actually I mean, overtaking the Ember now. No, for sure. What once sort of... Uh... Yeah, the first heroes are accounted for, the, the ults have been used, yeah. Raw's, Raw goes down, you know, we saw how confident Chris can just sort of just walk through the middle of the fight. Yeah, Make we're... sure that he's in position to, to be kicking out as much damage as possible. See top lane, Hector will play it safe, yep. goes for the song TP. And the one thing too is like, they've itemized now at this point, right, the armlet, the maelstrom, this is to deal with the Naga Siren, this is this con cons consistent damage that's going to be clearing out these illusions. It's not this big like, Desolator, this chunking damage that can eat the Leshrac. So Chris, you know, he could maybe get away with quite a lot in this game. They want to try and go for him, take him down in with the chains into the arrow. They'll sadly do so. Great chain stun. Solid catch here from EG. We're seeing if they can push on for more. Jump forward with the Remnant. Arbed attempts to close the gap on Whisper. We'll hold back though. I don't want to try. It feels Maybe good, they do want to dive the tissues. If they catch him around this area, if Whisper steps out, they good. might go for a kill attempt. Oh, the ward's placed. Yeah, they'll see it. Probably seen though. Visco is probably going to be able to get rid of that one quick. And you know, we did get to, they get to see a couple things also in these last situations. So much happening. But Chen, we did see he went for the shard, so he's going to be stealing those ancient creeps consistently from the Beastmaster. And Chris needs to be a little more careful how far up he is alone. Sure, he's got the hand of God in some situations, but it's a lot of burst damage still from EG. Especially if they have everyone on top of him like that. Very close game, 10 to 8. Radiant are scanning. Still playing in this aggressive position, EG. Maybe seeing if they can do something early about the tier 2s. I mean, These are coming in. I mean, Beast Coast, they, they will take a fight if it is presented to them down here. Got their ults ready. EG's just waiting to see if, like, someone, like, people trickle in one by one. Because their heroes, they do at burst if they find them in the 1v1, or in the 1v, like, 2v3, etc. But if it's a 5v5, it can be a lot harder for EG. This tier 2 is falling pretty Big quick push. here to the push of EG. And in fact, it's gone. So an early tier 2 tower taken down. At the same time, Stinger, he's really trying his best to get a trade up top. I know. EG side, they will TP back. Ah. Push Stinger away in time. He's going to go for the TP in the trees. TP. And there. They, they won't know that he's there. Nice little spot to hide in as Stinger gets away. Won't get the tower, but still able to do a lot of damage on that top lane. It's the Chen mini game. You know, it everything just happen at these points when everything just, everything's just split pushing. They have the Naga Siren, so it's just natural for him to start doing this. Getting a decent amount of farm to level 10 already with the drums, with the shard, medallion too. A lot of different ways to buff up and keep them, the less track in particular alive with a plate mail now too. Chris Luck sitting at 24 armor, 2200 HP. CLT was considering sort of what route he wanted to take. Does opt to, to finish the Mionet. Also was uh, thinking about the Halberd and the Scardi. I mean, what, what would you sort of imagine is, is top of the list for him next? Does he want that bit of evasion or, it's, or yeah. does he want to have the Scardi to kind of deal with some of this sustain that the Lesh is able to survive off the back of in the fights? Could depend on how successful the next fight is, right? Like if he gets a couple kills, maybe just choose the Scardi. If not, maybe just wants the Halberd. It's a really good Halberd game, so he probably wants that anyway versus Naga. Naga never wants to build the true strike. Hart now finished up, K1. He's you know, going to be hard to... Scary. Pretty hard to kill, even with that Mionet. Yep, He's able to sort of split the fight with the illusions, get them on some of the supports. Now, RTZ's going to have his work cut out in terms of trying to just clear through this army that the K1's going to be involved in the fight with. They'll have to stick on him for so long, and he does have a lot of different ways to bail him out too, right? The Brew, the Sleep, the Hand of God, of course, from the Chen. Let's see what each you can find. Dyer's Fest is, is inside Abed. He doesn't have the BKB quite yet on this Ember Spirit, so still has to be very careful of Carapace. Yeah, Gojira playing nicely around the sentry they've got down. Means that EG won't manage to find an entry into the fight from this spot. Gojira Which... mostly is just like playing either around the Naga or the Lash, just waiting with the Carapace, right? Because if that instant jump comes, he Carapace and they can turn it right away onto the Ember Spirit. See they can get to with this smoke. GG were pretty aware of this. And indeed with the scan hitting, they'll, they'll certainly make sure that everybody's back under the safety of their structures underneath their towers. So Beast Coast not able to get a catch this time. Having to avoid fights a lot though. I look at the map state. 
Look at the way that they're able to just keep everything forced in onto the side of EG Beast Coast. This Naga Sun's starting to be a problem. It is. It's, it's not easy for, for some of EG's members to deal with these strong illusions with that heart. Yeah, I mean, it has to be either the Life Sealer or the Ember to clear out the waves. They can't be at every single one of the lanes. That's top now. Glyph is popped, but that is the Tier 3 Glyph. Actually, I'm lying. It's a Tier 2 Glyph. I'm sorry. I thought the mid tower was there. So we'll have it reset at the very least. This is the thing, though. If, if EG don't find fights and kill score stays pretty, pretty stagnant, you are going to see quite the difference in what K1 is at Naga Sirens able to clean up from the map. Yeah. In comparison to Arteezy on the Lifestealer, already 3,000 gold difference and, and that will only grow unless EG can make some sort of move. But the thing, it's just difficult for them to look for the move because as we said, you know, their lineup, it does want to look for these pickoffs, but when your lanes are all getting shoved so in, much it's pressure for you to find any of these pickoffs. And Beast Coast, really, they're sticking together quite a lot here. Yeah, okay. Now looking for even go for this next tier two. Yeah, K1's been just micro the illusions perfectly on this sort of mid and top lane two lanes consistently held right up to the high ground of eg chris also having his lotus done i believe the ags on the bruise about to be finished too so beast Coast, they're hitting quite a few timings here eg Trying to feel what timing they're going to feel where they're like, okay, we can actually go for this straight up fight. It's, you know, they've got all these items, but when are they actually going to look for that real big on team fight versus Beast Coast? It does feel a bit difficult. And with Beast Coast, if Beast Coast is able to consistently keep these lanes pushed in at some point, you know, Roche is going to start coming back up. Ichi's going to have to look to make a move. Two minutes until we do see that, but let's see when they do look to make that aggressive move. It's going to be now. They're smoked. Okay, one. Not going to be able to offer up the, the, the catch there at top. I mean, EG do look like they're interested in taking a fight here. Still difficult. See how they can start it off around the board. Like nice Stinger. Off the Frostbite, they'll go for the Roar on Stinger. Nightfall commits it with the BKB. They want to kill off the Chen. They'll do yeah. so very quickly. See if they can chase for more. They look towards K1. It's back up to the safety of his own high ground. And looks like EG, they'll just manage to get the one kill for now with that commitment. Okay. With the Roar down, they, they might have to be careful themselves. Arbet steps forward. Pops the dust. We'll be able to dodge out the stun. Arrow ends up getting blocked by the, 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 the creep here from Beast Coast. So no connection there. That was pretty close. Almost gets Carapace. Almost gets stunned from the Lash. They'll find a kill on the Chen, but Chen now respawning. They're gonna have to reset. Deal with their lanes again. That's kind of, I think that's actually one of the better kills if they can get it like that, because it prevents so much healing. So much chaos that will kick off. It does just feel like, you know, K1's Nagasar is getting out of control. He's mm -hmm. pretty much got the Scardi done. He, he's really gonna just probably deal with all the rest of the heroes and isolate the Arteezy Naga Siren at some point. I mean, Arteezy's really got his work cut out in terms of build. He is gonna go for for, for the BKB, picked up. Okay. Again, uh, we saw being a similar approach from the, the Lifestealer earlier today against the, the PL, just making sure they can sort of stand in the fight, not have to worry about the mana getting burned through, and, uh, and just giving themselves that extra time between the Rage and the BKB to just stay alive and just keep hitting this Naga Siren and, and, and trying to clear out her summons, the, the, the illusions as well as herself. Stun, we'll connect on top. Arteezy's mana. It's time. He doesn't have the mana for Rage now, but they don't have anything else to catch him yet. And that can't quite. That was a little scary. Whisper does pop the split. He's going to try and set up for some kills here around them. It will get fly. Yeah, I think he's like, they're just avoiding us constantly. Like, he just wants to look for something to use that split. I mean, and now Roche is up. Roche is indeed. It's there and ready. It's a beast ghost. They could definitely look to just step into the pit and start going for this. They, they have the song to rely on if they need to bail out or sort of set up a fight outside of the pit. And EG, only the four of them up. It's, it's not going to be easy for EG to get in on this. You already see Kajira in his position. He's giving great info outside of the pit. In fact, he's able to line up a two-man stun to start things off here. He's gone already. It already is. Aegis picked uh -oh. up on Chris. EG, they've got to run. Nightfall pops the BKB. Arbed will go with a couple of remnants, but he's still pretty close here to Beast Coast. Ends up losing his courier on the way out. Oh, but at least himself and the hero will keep the distance. But uh, he just picked up on Chris. Beast Coast, they're ready to come running down the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, EG, they tried, to, they, they found like the one catch on Chad, but now, you know, when is when are they going to be able to deal with the Naga Siren? This Naga is just getting way too out of control. Same thing with Chris. He's the one carrying the Aegis on this Lash now, too. They're going to go for high ground. Lip is available. But this, they're going to have to pop it pretty early because that Edict. I mean, how do they they, they deal with this? I mean, it's K1, 27 minutes in, Hart and Scotty. He held the Edict. He actually baited the Glyph. He lifted his hands, canceled the animation. So they've got Edict now for the push. Ah, big brain stuff here from Chris. This, this tower is going down. The Rax also. I think maybe more, yeah. 
Uh-oh, EG. I mean, EG's out on the map trying to pick up some farm. Arteezy will TP back. He is able to finish off the BKB, so he's got his next item done. See if this makes much of a difference in the fights, though. Rain tracks will go down, and Beast Coast, they'll back off for now from pushing for the melee. They still have 20 seconds left on split, so they maybe wait, wait for like 10 or 15 seconds before they look for that fight. Kojira trying to catch a cheeky stun, won't get it. Not easy. The rage yet. Beast Coast. They're still lingering in the area. I mean, they're keeping, again, both of these lanes consistently pushed into the high ground, top and mid. I mean, they're they're ready for fights. Like, the Bruce split is ready. Bottom lane, though, pushing in. They're going to send the Lash to take care of it. Still sticking in the area, though, with K1. Denying away this farm from EG. 6k gold lead. EG, they see the Lash bottom. They're trying to make a move out to catch something. Yeah, Aga just getting bigger and bigger. Lash getting bigger and bigger. They're going to try for a move here. Gotta get it's something easy. big. EG, they need to find something. Bested into Night Boys, ready to try and play off the back of a, a blink roar initiation from the Beastmaster. There's an arcane rune in the river though, so Chris, he'll have that ready for the next fight. Still with nearly three minutes on the Aegis, it's not, it's not easy for EG to jump anyone outside of the supports. Fly will start to try to start things here, and they will follow up onto Stinger. They'll get the roar off as well. Okay, they'll get the two supports. Pretty good grabs. See if they can do anything off the back of killing the two supports. They gotta though. fix the lanes. The lanes are all constantly pushed in either from the Naga Siren or from the Chen creeps. Their whole jungle is actually also just being farmed from Chen. Like, I was just looking, I'm just watching the Chen microing all of his creeps and he's just taking all of the farm away. So still tons of pressure on the map. They do get at least two kills out of it, but it is just those two supports. And now bottom tower looking to draw. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. East Coast, I mean, this their macro game, very nice so far. Making sure they don't lose K1 at all so far. 0-0-2. Zero, zero, Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. I mean, indeed, uh, during the time those two supports were down, nothing more that you really could get other than Maybe some increased sort of space on their, their own half of the map in the jungle. Yeah. That there was not going to be an aggressive play made by Beast Coast, but unfortunately for themselves, not enough of, uh, of kills to do anything aggressive and, and really deal with the push that's coming in. Because already, Chris, he's back up to the high ground on the bottom lane. They're going to pop the... Hey, they're going to pop the Rax Glyph. Wanting really to hold on to those tier threes. Don't have another Glyph after this. Now the push continuing. Oh, it's easy. He's gonna try and get in on the fight. Steps up towards K1. Nightfall, he has the roar. He's got the song off. Get the arrow as well. Rage into the BKB. So a long time here that is gonna be able to continue to beat in onto the Naga Siren, but it's still just not enough damage. He's only down to pretty much half health here, K1. As he backs Chris away, they'll down. kill Chris. That's the Aegis gone. A quick invest here from RTZ as he arrow. looks to stay alive. They'll get the opening stun onto Chris. Out to the side though, Arbet's been held up by the split up. K1, he's in chasing him outside of the base. K1's getting low, falls to the side. They're trying to separate K1 from the life steal, and he'll be able to do so. K1's fine for now. As RTZ also falls back up to the high ground of his own base. Oh, oh he connects. Nice little arrow there onto Stinger. So once again, EG wow. getting the two supports, taking that Aegis away a little early from Chris. Right, this Definitely a defense here coming out from EG that... Now, all things considered, they'll be pretty content with. That was an absolutely beautiful fight. Everyone's sitting at like 10%, 20% HP on EG, jumping in and out, getting these connections. Making sure that Chris Luck can't actually use this Aegis to its maximum. Almost even getting K1. That was a really good hold from EG. Yeah, we're definitely... Getting that roar off as that song kind of comes out. I came at the same time, thing. pretty much. Uh, and indeed, you're seeing exactly why you go for this Rage BKB build. Yeah. Just, it gives Arteezy this maximum amount of time, even during the song, to just keep hitting the Naga Siren. And we saw that ended up getting down to about a third HP at the start of that fight. If is able to get that Halberd done and then some sort of damage item, and during that sort of setup, they'll have a good chance of killing K1. That was before they picked up quite a few items too. Abed now has an Aghanim stun too, so his damage is gonna be quite a lot higher in this next fight. And they're looking to get aggressive. They're actually looking for more. See whether they can make a quick jump towards him with the remnant. Arbed quickly sweeping the map. He's managed to get his way over towards Chris. He's got Lotus there. Yeah, underneath the, the tier two arrow is going to hit. Chris gets the angle. That's Chris going down. EG, they'll definitely want to try and continue to fight on for more. Kajira turns with the sun on to the two of them. Indeed, over towards the mid lane. They have the raw set up onto K1. No further damage output for now, though. As K1's got the backup of Stinger. Nothing to stop the CM ult. We'll clear out all those illusions. TP over from Whisper. EG, now looking to bail. Another net. And trying to fly. So they want to try and tackle K1. I mean, RTZ's going to go for the squishies first. Go straight for Stinger. Takes down a second support. 
Same thing you get K1. East Coast. Very much for sort of the first time this game where Beast Coast are the ones that are having to play a little more cautiously yeah. around EG. EG's definitely found their footing of timing really for that. For the lifesaver to stick on his targets, right? It really is. This BKB, his Halberd also making him super tanky. And he has, does have that goal frenzy talent too, so... Can I mean, stick on those targets a lot easier once he gets that initial hit. I mean, and what, what is the item here for Artiz? He's got 2,600 gold saved up. Does he want to get the Scardi still to sort of limit the heals of the uh, of the, the less track with Bloodstone? Or do you want to see him get some sort of straight-up damage on him? Oh, honestly, Scardi. He's, he's got a lot to think about here, Artiz. It feels like they're going to they're gonna start getting more and more damage for the Ember Spirit, so I wouldn't I wouldn't blame him if he does go for the Scardi. It is so valuable versus, valuable versus that less track, as you're mentioning. Because he could also, I, I mean, we'll see who's going to, they could also still get like the Mage Slayer Bloodthorn kind of build. I'm not sure who's going to go for that, but it's always pretty valuable versus Lesh. So, yeah, we'll see which one it's going to be. Look at this. I bet he's actually got his shard ah. now, too. Again, a quick kill on to, to Gojira. So, I bet he's got Ags plus his shard. So, watch for these remnants. Level 18 also, of course, was hit in that last fight. So, his damage is going to be a lot higher versus that Naga Siren, too. EG no. themselves, they might have a bit of a chance to. Push up towards the base here. They're bringing the creeps in on the mid lane. Dyer's top tower is under oh, good sort of vision here towards the, the move that K1's making over towards the mid. Looks like they'll still Abed hold back a little bit here, EG. Yeah, Abed, he keeps a remnant there, goes back, is starting to clean up the counter push. We'll get a bit of a setup the area. onto Artsy's. He'll be thrown into the air by Whisper. Artsy's popping the rage. He's going to try and get on top of K1. Look at the illusions out. Turns now over towards Chris. The Rage finishing, Artiz has got to be careful, gets caught by the split up, we'll be able to force him back to safety, infest into fly, he's fine for now. Crit. He's gone, Artiz trying to go for round two, but as soon as no, he no, comes no, out the infest, they catch him with the opening stun, will manage to get the BKB off, and with that BKB duration, stays on top of Stinger. Artiz now godlike, he's ready for more, turns towards Kajira, Rage at the ready, so after the BKB comes to an end, Artiz can continue to push on, in fact, no, he's going to opt to use the rest of the Rage to Ooh. TP out. He gets bashed. I don't even think K1 actually got the hit on him there, but that was close. They actually got the stun there. Gojira, the two-man stun, it catches the Life Stealer and the Beastmaster in the back, so kind of splits the fight up. EG do get pushed away. I mean, yeah, RTZ making the, the correct call at the last moment to get out. Yeah, that was Realized that the fight was not going quite as good as maybe EG felt uh, they could get it going. Okay. Choosing the right moment to bail out, but now three heroes dead on EG. And we do see that RTZ actually has gone for... Uh, I believe it was the Bastion, yeah, yeah, but yeah. going to go for the Abyssal to stick on targets instead. Let's see if they can hold back. K1 here is onto the, the barracks. His BKB is cooldown, so Artizi does have to be a bit careful how he uses his rage. Absolutely, we're seeing that the rage alone, not enough for Artizi to rely on in the, the midst of a team fight. So many chain stuns that can come out from Gojira as well as the Lash. But yeah, we see this one again. I think the stun is going to come in a few seconds right around this moment when Artizi backs up. It's tough to stick on the Naga Siren, you know, even though they do get this connection to chains, he is still very tanky, and they have to be very careful with these supports, you know, if they get caught at all from a Lash, at all from a Naga Siren, they're just dead. And yeah, here it is, the stun from Gojira, boom, catches the two, catches the beast, and K1's able to focus fire. Absolutely, any sort of stun that allows K1 and the, the illusions to close in on a hero. They're not going to stand much of a chance against this massive Naga Siren here, 28,000 net worth. K1 just continuing to, to grow at an incredible rate. Has yet to die this game. Rosh in about a minute. Also having an arcane rune inside of Chris Lux bottle. Getting more stacks. Continuously level 20 on the Lesh. 20 on the Ember. We still keep killing this this axe, of course, from Whisper. Does connect, starting to burn away some mana. I mean, mana is pretty important on RTZ. That is. Rage and BKB, like, that's look true. Like, Halberd, Rage, BKB, like, he actually has to be very careful how he uses these. Now he has Infest, so he has 240 mana. They're gonna get the jump on Chris in the mid. The rest of Beast Coast to try to make an aggressive move on, on towards Fly, but Chris was left behind, and EG, they move immediately to punish that. Great Infest blink play there from Nightfall on RTZ. So they can get around the mid now. Ooh, might be able to get Gojira too. But K1 is around, and the mana's gone on Arbed. K1 turns, has the root, has the, the bash as well, holding him in position. As he steps across, there's no saving Arbed. 
I mean, this Diffusos, it's really being a problem for the, for the BKBs, right? They keep getting burnt and they can't pop their BKBs because of it. And you see as well, you know, Chris committed with the buyback. So he really wants oh, to wow. just join the push. They know or maybe go for the go for yeah, the roast. That looks to be indeed what, the, what they're going to do. It's an agony. I mean, too. And they don't have, of course, control of the outpost either, e.g. in their own jungle. So they, they can't really go for some sort of buyback play on our bed either. No. They're just going to have to let this go here to Beast Coast. And, I mean, is this one where you give it to the Naga Siren? Probably, right? Because he can just net the Life Stealer through those uh, spell immunities. Uh, I think certainly I so. Think that's gonna uh, we'll see if they see anything higher up the list than that. Oh, Chris takes it. Okay. I mean, the Nihilism also okay. the way could protect the Lesh, so we'll see. He takes everything. Oh, my. Okay. Takes the cheese and the angels. I mean, he did buy back, you know. He, he wanted to make fair. sure he got his money's worth. That is quite fair. Definitely could see the argument, though, for the axe on that August time for that, you know, that, of course, ensnared through the spell immunity, but. K1 also about to finish up a Bloodthorn. I mean, he's hitting critical mass soon. Maybe that's also why he's probably like, I'm going to buy an Aghanim soon, perhaps. That, that is the thing, right? You, in terms of these two heroes, who's going to get the money quicker yeah. for their own Ags? It's going to be the Naga Siren if the game continues on for longer. That's mid lane, K1. All, all three lanes are getting sieged. And then, what do you do if you're EG? You've got to do something. They're going to try. Nightball, he's looking for a raw target. Turns towards Chris. Lotus is up. Must be careful as he holds back on it for now. Hansies is in with the bashes. They're bringing Chris down pretty quickly. That'll be him down the ones. Arbet jumps in. He's gonna get caught out by the spike characters, but at the same time, just does, does get yielded into the air. Hansies, he's focusing down the Naga Siren. K1's gonna lose, he's gonna get forced to the side. He's gonna get the soap oh, he's, got, he's got the BKP up, able to charge you with the remnant. Take down K1. He's ready for more. Looks towards Kajira inside the base. Hansies, he'll die. Chris just charging into the disco party. Pony just destroying the ball. Holy crap. And then, Chris just killed him. He's a, a hell of a lot short on the gold here. 1,500 gold. He does not have here to get back in on the action. He is it done. They're, they're going to try and hold with the three of them. And indeed, Chris, he's ready to chase it back up towards the fountain. Oh the Runs nihilism. down Nightfall, and he's not done yet. He's full HP, and he's got plenty of mana to play with. The buyback comes out from Arbed. As EG, they scramble back towards the fountain. They've got to try and hold and keep their cool here for 50 seconds now without Arteezy. They're going to get mega. And there's still the cheese as well on Chris. Oh my god, dude, the damage that he did. They focused fire K1, but they ignored the less for a bit. I Look mean, at this, 12,800 damage. This is at least going to be the mega creeps here. I, can they really slow down Beast Coast for this 30 seconds? I don't know if they can. I don't know if they can. 30 seconds seems like a big window. This Edict is about to come back up. It's got the 25 talent too. The first tier four falls. The second shortly to come. It's going The down, Ancients no exposed. As Beast Coast, they're looking to close it up. EG, they'll go for one final attempt to holding back Beast Coast. But they're just focusing the Ancient. EG, there's nothing GG. to be done. GG is called. Beast Coast will be moving on. And this is the end of the road for Evil Geniuses this year. Oh, my. South America has taken out EG. Back-to-back -back series. 2-0. 2-0. Oh my god, Beast Ghost, the team that got EG into TI, now they've taken it away. Oh my god. I mean, they've got to be feeling fantastic. From the first game, no complete dominance from start to finish, and then the second one, a bit of a different approach, more sort of just focusing on and K1 becoming this incredible beast that couldn't be dealt with. He was just at the top of the farm and far ahead for the entire game. It just got too much at the end of the game. You know, EG able to pull together pretty much the, the better defense that we've seen for sure. in, in out of both of these series, but it just still was not good enough. Yeah. Once again today, the South American team's coming out on top. And Beast Coast, just, it, just this is a team on LAN. It's so hard to prepare for them yeah, because they, they, they just hit another level when they get out there in front of the crowd. They power up off each other. They play out for each other so well. You can see, yeah. As soon as the, the Naga Siren has a little trouble, Chris comes in and just slams things. I mean, wow. That was an unbelievable series. 22 to 20. This one a lot closer than the last game, but still.